I'm standing in my kitchen, staring at a container of baking soda. The exact same stuff you probably have in your pantry. Arm and Hammer. Not what you'd expect when you think muscle building supplements. But here's the thing. A subscriber suggested I look into baking soda as a supplement for over 50 guys. Then just as I was thinking about it, Will Tennyson dropped a video where he tried every legal performance enhancer out there, including a combination of baking soda and beetroot juice. He gave it a perfect 5 star rating and said it helped him finally push past a training plateau he'd been stuck on for months. I actually added weight to an exercise I was stalled on for months. So naturally, I had to try it. I wanted to know, was it the baking soda, the beetroot juice, or did the combination make all the difference? As for the science behind it, there aren't many studies on baking soda and beetroot juice together, especially for resistance training. But separately, they've got some solid research behind them. Beetroot juice is loaded with nitrates, which helps improve blood flow and oxygen delivery to your muscles. That means better endurance and performance. Baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate, helps keep your muscles pH balanced during tough workouts, which delays fatigue so you can go harder, longer. I decided to run a seven week experiment during my Sunday workouts to see if I'd experience a tangible effect on my training and to find out which supplement or combination worked the best. I'm going to go over the seven weeks pretty fast, so feel free to ask any questions in the comments and I'll fill in the details. Now week one was a baseline week, no supplements, just measured my pre and post workout pump as it's claimed and even Will felt it gave him a better pump than usual. So I was going to test this out. Week two, I tried baking soda and beetroot juice combined. I saw some pretty impressive gains. Like I added four extra reps on my cable rope curls, which is wild for such a small muscle. Other exercises didn't budge much. And honestly, I didn't get a better pump. But hey, I'm here for the gains, not the pump. In week three, I didn't supplement. And my performance did dip a bit, especially on the curls where I lost five reps compared to the week before. But because I wasn't supplementing, you would expect some regression. Week four, I tried baking soda by itself. To give you a heads up, it tastes terrible and can cause gastrointestinal distress. I always had it with a meal and waited about an hour to an hour and a half before training. And as a guy who's almost 60, I didn't have any issues taking it this way. For dosage, I added 0.3 of a gram for every kilogram of body weight. This week was actually my best of the whole experiment. I had exceptional progress on five out of the six exercises. The cable curls bounced back, and even though I failed on the last rep of shoulder press, I still added two more overall. Week five was another no supplement week, and I got mixed results. Some of the exercises improved by a rep, others slipped back. I added 10 pounds to my chest press, as I was doing 16 reps on all four sets for that exercise. For week six, it was time for beetroot juice only, and I wasn't impressed. Only the chest press saw a big jump three extra reps, but my leg curls actually lost a rep. The rest were either no change or just a single rep improvement, which I felt was kind of average. For dosage, I went with the Will Tennyson size glass, although the recommended dosage is 70 to 140 milliliters, which you could almost take in one shot. Now something I realized after starting was the beetroot juice I bought had lemon juice in it. Lemon juice is acidic and baking soda is alkaline so they might cancel each other out when combined. There shouldn't be that much lemon juice in it as it was just added as a preservative, but that could explain why the combination of beetroot juice and baking soda didn't do as well as baking soda alone. The purpose of week seven was to see how much I had improved overall, and I didn't take any supplements for this week. Over the seven weeks, I'd say my chest press, shoulder press, and cable rope curls all improved above average. Tricep extensions only progressed by one rep over seven weeks, and dumbbell rows, which for me are always stubborn, increased by four reps, so I'm happy about that. The cable rope curls were the biggest surprise. 12 more reps over seven weeks. For such a small muscle, that's huge. In the seven weeks before this experiment, I only added two reps. I didn't have any exercises that regressed in my last workout, so I consider that a victory. For me, baking soda was the clear winner. It helped me break through plateaus, and get some gains. The beetroot juice, not so much. But everyone's different, and your response might be better or worse. Next time I'm stuck on a plateau, and you might want to try this too, go to your pantry, wherever you keep it, and grab some baking soda for that extra edge. To find out how a high fat diet affected my testosterone and blood work, watch this video next, and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.